Namaste. How's it going? Before we learn and practice advanced breath regulation exercises or pranayam, we need to grow and be comfortable with the Nadi Shodhana first. The Nadi Shodhana is the preparatory technique so we can progress safely to the advanced energetic practices. Because Nadi Shodhana really helps us build internal awareness. All right, Nadi Shodhana is the technique of balancing, cleansing, and purifying the Nadis. And we have many thousands, and all of them are affected by the practice of the Nadi Shodhana. But it targets more you know, the two important ones, you know, the Pingala, the right channel, which is associated with our sympathetic nervous system, and the Ida, the left side, which relates to our parasympathetic nervous system. Unless these two nadis unite and become balanced, the Shushumna nadi will not open up. So it's so vital and essential that we you know, work them out first. All right. Yeah. So for today, let me teach you the basics of the nadi shodhana, the fundamentals, without retention. Yet. With kumbhaka, or breath suspension, you need to learn it from your teacher. Because the moment you start working on the retention, the whole of your program will have to be rewritten. You know, because you need to tackle only specific elements, um, not just the elements, the time, duration, the intensity, and even off the mat of services. Because kumbhakas, or uh, breath retention or suspension, will inevitably awaken the dormant centers of the body and the brain. And this will uh, inevitably yeah, emerge the subconscious. Yeah, so the guidance of a teacher is important. So you are always reminded yeah, of um, yeah, the pitfalls and there are dangers to it. So the teacher will be able to give you the progressive and safe practice. But without retention, Everyone can do this. It's good for increasing our energy levels and at the same time, yeah, clearing blockages. Yeah, so we can store yeah, extra levels of energy we can utilize yeah, to sustain our daily tasks. All right, basics. Yeah, so let's learn first the hand gesture. Yeah. Yeah. So you will be you're practicing what we call the Nasagra or the Nasikagra Mudra. All right. To do that, the index and the uh, the index and the middle finger of your right hand rest yeah, here, yeah, this space between the eyebrows. And this is important yeah, to calm the optic nerves and then to focus the mind. Yeah, so we can just relax our eyes behind your eyelids so you're not distracted. All right, Nasikagra Mudra. Eventually in the future, and your energy will lead you there, yeah, you will feel that yeah, it will be more comfortable folding them. I started this way, but now I practice the Nadi Shodhana with yeah, the index and the middle finger yeah, folding like this. Yes, it's more natural, but this one helps us to yeah, calm and focus the mind. All right. The thumb of the right hand yeah, blocks the right nostril, and then when you press, you don't press against the hole, but rather up here. Yeah, there's the crease, and then you go slightly up, and you will feel a soft cartilage. Don't pinch. Just apply a moderate or even gentle pressure. So when you inspire through the left side, you feel that the air can only pierce the, uh, the left side, but the right side is close but not tight, Yeah, not hard. Yeah, you don't want to be pinching because there are sensitive blood vessels there. You don't want to be yeah, hurting or rupturing those blood vessels. So just a mild or moderate pressure. Like that. All right. Now, the ring finger yeah, remains yeah, open, such as this. Yeah. It's, it, it, because you will be using that ring finger to block your yeah, left nostril. So the technique, the hand gesture is... Thumb, yeah, blocking your right, inhale through the left, and then your ring finger blocks the left, exhale through your right. Inhale through your right, block, exhale through the left. All right, so that's the hand gesture and how we utilize the hand. All right, details. Yeah. So we're using the outer edge, the outer side of the thumb, in closing the right nostril. Yeah, and this agrees with the flow of the energy. Remember my lesson regarding this? Yeah, the um, 
the bending of a hand and a limb so we can agree with the innate concentric or circular spiraling action of the energy inside yeah so by using the outer edge of the hand you keep your el shoulder yeah, and the rest of your arm the elbow relax yeah because if you place the pad itself there so inevitably the elbow will protrude out and that doesn't agree with the nature of the energy so here so the shoulders and the elbow relax all right now in blocking yeah the uh left nostril you're using the inner edge of your ring finger here so if you're using the outer edge of the thumb to block the right nostril you're using the inner edge of your ring finger to close your left nostril. Okay, now the breath. All right. So inspiring the breath yeah, through your left side, inhaling. And you will notice since you're just breathing through one nostril, yeah, you will be able to prolong yeah, the duration of the breath. But don't force it. Yeah, so just allow it to go naturally. And then you will feel yeah, your left channel will rise. Yeah. The left side of your trunk. You might be feeling the breath pierce through the sinuses of the temple and even up the, the head region. Good. So inspiring naturally, but your full potential and don't um, force the breath. Don't flood that nostril. Because you wanna you make the breath yeah, easy flowing yeah, so you can keep it light and supported. Inhaling. Good. And this this natural pause at the top of the breath. Yeah, remember my lesson in the four stages of the breath? Inhaling this light pause. So the nadi you can absorb yeah, the prana. Good. And then your ring finger yeah, blocks your left nostril and exhale from the right. And also this uh, light pause at the bottom of the exhalation. But don't hold it, just pause, that natural pause. Now inhaling from the right. Block the right, exhaling through the left. So that's right repetition. Yeah. Inhale left, just a gentle pause, yeah, block, open the right, exhale right. Inhale right, pause, exhale left. All right, yeah, so that's the breath yeah, technique. Now, there are distinctive alignment of the head and the neck as well. All right, so by the way, you, the ideal position for this is cross leg sitting position, whether the Siddhasana, Sukhasana, or even Padmasana. But for general uh, practice, just cross the legs, yeah, Sukhasana, if you need to, you use the wall to support your back. If you're not doing the cross leg asana, you yeah, sit on a chair yeah, with back support. So I will be including pictures in uh, this lesson so you can see. All right, now, it's important to keep your spine tall, but don't fight it and just live it up. Yeah. Therefore, it's essential that before you practice the Nadi Shodhana or any breath regulation or energetic practices for that matter, you need to awaken the spine. So do some gentle stretching. All right, just to open the spine. Now, when you inspire the breath in, all right, for example, you know, you're breathing through your left, yeah? Yeah, breathing in. As you inspire the breath in, allow the heat to lightly bow over the heart, inhaling, yeah, so picture your breath. Yeah, so picture your breath goes in a looping action. So from yeah, you know, from the nostrils, the, the breath goes down, and then you can feel your energy rise, and then it will pierce at the back of your neck. Therefore, you need to loop the skull slightly forward, and this will you know, give you access to you know, the Jalandhara Bandha. So you can open the pathway of the breath. Yeah. You know, Eating to the brain because the breath, yeah, the the energy, yeah, the breath pierces the medulla oblongata first, yeah, the top of the spine, and from there it will this it will rise up to the brain, and most of it goes down to the body. Yeah, so by opening the pathway, you allow yeah more energy actually, more sensation to pierce the cranial cavity. 
Yeah, because if you're tilted like that, if your head is crooked, so there will be energy cut. So you need to keep the pathway of the energy open. So from the hips, actually, when you keep the spine tall, from the hips, yeah, it goes to the back, pierces the middle lobe lungata, and goes inside the brain. Yeah. Therefore, by folding the head and then looping the chin close to the throat, yeah, you narrow as well the throat region. And that will yeah, refine your technique. So you gather yeah, the force to the midline. So that's your bandas in an organic sense. So there's this natural bowing of the head, but don't squeeze. Yeah, the inhaling. You're going to feel this rise. Close. Exhale to the right. When you exhale, you might lightly open the neck. Exhale. Breathing in, loop it. Block. Exhale. Slightly relax the neck region. All right. So, uh, that is the, the basic technique in summary. All right. So, duration, yeah, time, and progression. Okay. Now, time first. Nadi Shodana, in any breathing regulation exercises, are ideally practice after waking up in the morning. And when I say morning, I mean early morning, right. not late morning. Right. Now, early morning is between 4.30, if you're an early riser, yeah, or, six, uh, or end 6.30 if you are a regular riser. So during those times, so from 4.30 in the morning to 6.30 in the morning, are uh, nadis, a uh, brain, uh, sushumna, yeah, they're quite open and relaxed. When we are half asleep and half awake, yeah, the autonomic functions are not fully active yet, therefore we can access the energy anatomy without forcing them. And for most of us, that is the ideal time you know, to practice our breath regulation exercises and even meditation. So early hours in the morning. So what you do, you know, this is what I do. Now let me share with you. All right, so after waking up in the morning, you know, rinse your mouth. It's very important to release the toxins because the, the toxins of the night uh, drain through the mouth. So we need to rinse your mouth and make sure your mouth uh, is clean. Yeah, so goggle or you may yeah, also yeah, take or uh, drink yeah, just um, yeah, some uh, a small amount of uh, warm water yeah, just to warm the throat. All right. Now, place is important. Right. So we need to practice our breath regulation exercises at a specific area or location in our homes. Now, if you're doing it at your bedside, so what I suggest is this. Before you sleep, yeah, prepare your practice space already. And so when I was starting, so what I would do is I would just you know, fold my blanket just beside my bedside. So when I wake up in the morning after washing my face and saying my morning prayer, I sit and I practice the Nati Shodana. All right, so place is important. If we do the practice consistently at the same spot, yeah, so we build yeah, discipline. And uh, discipline is important. Discipline builds habit until yeah, it becomes a part of your life. All right, duration. All right, so when we practice Nadi Shodana without Kumbhaka, just do the technique shortly. So I suggest yeah, between 5 and 15 minutes only. All right, so the first month, just five minutes. Don't rush. Yeah, so this is not about who finishes first. It's about feeling it and, 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 and experiencing and realizing yeah, the tiny yeah, progression we make. Because in between transitions, that's where the, I say, the, the beautiful things happen. And the realizations, because there are many beautiful things which will emerge as you transition from one stage to the next. Now, second month, do it for like maybe 10 minutes, but don't rush. You might just do it seven minutes first, yeah? And after another month, yeah, add another three or five minutes yeah, until you can yeah, comfortably, yeah, consistently, daily, 
at the same time, same place, practice the method for 15 minutes. You might say 15 minutes is short. Yes, it's short, but the essence here is regularity, consistency, and awareness. Awareness is important. There's no use of doing the breath if you're distracted. Uh, so in the morning is the most, I say, ideal. All right, so can we do the Nadi Shodhana as we tackle our non-normal tasks? I suggest no, because for me, breath regulation is a sacred practice. It's like praying. Yeah. So yes, you may you may do other techniques to relax the mind. For example, if you feel your eyes and your brain and your mental faculties are so restless, yeah, you're faced with the extreme stress or heaviness of the emotion in the brain. So what you do is to back uh, off from work, yeah, close your eyes and just breathe normally. Inhaling, lift your optic nerves up and suspend, exhale. Or you may walk around, yeah, find nature, find colors. So the, those techniques are enough for you to calm the mind. But when you, start, when you work on breath regulation, I suggest a lot of time, special time for it. All right, so can we do it at night? Yes, if you do it at night, do it even shorter. I say five minutes only. All right, don't do Nadi Shodhana for long periods of time at night. Maybe just even three minutes, yeah? So just sitting low, sitting easy, inhaling. Same, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. If you do it short, yeah, the effect of the Nadi Shodhana is calming and relaxing because you're balancing yeah, your, the nasal cavity and the breath can easily yeah, flow through our system. All right, so after the practice, if you feel like blockages clogging your nostrils, just blow the blockages out. So again, yeah, cover your mouth, cover your nose, and yeah, just blow the blockages out. If you know how to do the Kapalabhati, you might do that as well. But just keep the cleansing practice short. Good. And then finally, chant the Om. Yeah, the Om mantra increases the yeah, balancing brain waves of the nervous system. So when you chant it, yeah, say it softly, but mindfully and penetrating. Yeah, take a long breath in through the nose. And the first, I say, tone your uh, voice yeah, produces, just follow it. Some days, yeah, the tone you might feel that your pitch is higher or your melody is slightly higher or uh, differs from your previous practice, just be. Yes, uh, it, uh, it says um, something about uh, the uh, energetic state you are feeling at that moment. Yeah. So just yeah, be, say it. Yeah, you sing the first tone or pitch which comes out of your mouth. So inhaling. Some days I would find my pitch is slightly higher. Sometimes slower. All right, so just do it softly, you know, quietly, but penetrating and special. How many ohms? Maybe three, four, or it can even go as many as nine repetitions. So it won't take long. Yeah. So the whole practice itself, yeah, from preparing the body, preparing the mouth, and then do your uh, preparatory uh, cleansing practices, yeah, yeah, up to the finish in the home, might take about only 15 minutes max. And what's 15 minutes for a long, time of healing, yeah, clearing, and happy practice. Good. So good luck, and I'll see you in our next video. Namaste. Bye.